Um, my name is Eva Wilkinson and I'm one of the Digital Skills Development Officers within the digital team at Education Scotland and I'm also being joined online by my fab colleague Susan Say this morning. Um, she is a Development Officer too and she is going to keep an eye on the chat for us and also um, be my very glamorous um, colleague and we're going to do a wee bit of demoing with each other back and forward just to show you how the real-time collaboration can work. Um, so you may think it's a wee bit strange this morning that we are delivering a Microsoft 0365 uh, via Glow webinar on Google Meet. Now, the reason for that is because some of the practitioners that are joining us this morning might not yet have their GLOW accounts. Um, so we might have some childminders or we might have some new practitioners um, who do not yet have GLOW access. And when they do have GLOW access, um, the platform that they might be using um, within their local authority might be Microsoft Office 365. We also delivered the same session back in June um, on GLOW um, via one of our teams. So um, that's the reason why it's been delivered um, on Google Meet. We're also recording this session this morning, so please do not worry if your connection drops out or if you're in school, in nursery, if there's any sorts of emergencies, fire alarms, or you know, if somebody's sick and you have to go and help out, don't worry because we are recording it. And we upload our recordings via our blog, our Did You Learn Scott blog, and we'll give you the link to that at the end. Him. So just before we get started, please do feel free to use the chat box at any point to ask any questions. If there's anything that maybe wasn't clear or, you know, anything that you just want to ask about or share that's working well for you, please do pop it in the chat box. Um, and if I don't see it, Susan will give me a little shout and I can go back and cover something. So I think we've not got a very high number online this morning, so it'll be fine to um, go back over things. So please don't hesitate to use that box. Um, also use it to um, say hello, where you're from and um, what age and stage you're working with as well. Okay, so let's get started. So what is GLOW? GLOW is our national online platform for all of Scotland's learners and educators. So every learner and every practitioner in each of Scotland's 32 local authorities have access to GLOW. They might just not have their um, logins yet. GLOW offers a number of tools and services to help you as an educator to enrich and enhance learning across the curriculum. You can share materials, design online resources and activities to engage learners and take part in professional learning opportunities. Um, and th the main reason we're having this webinar this morning is to highlight how you can speak to colleagues within your own settings, um, clusters, local authorities, RICs and across the country online. You can share experiences, resources and information and open up potential areas for collaborative working. And another benefit of accessing the GLOW environment is to visit the National Professional Learning Communities, which is another place to share resources, strengths, learning opportunities and professional intentions. And we'll show you how you can access all of that during our demos as well. So as well as coming along to our webinars and reaching out to our team for support, you can also access support from Glow Connect. And that's a website, and it doesn't need a Glow login, but it's a website on the web where you can access all help and support in relation to Glow. So it might be things like, um, you know, I, I need a, a Glow account, but I don't know who to contact within my local authority. You can do that um, by clicking on the Glow contacts list and that will tell you who to contact. It might be about security and privacy. So you might need some guidance on um, choosing a secure password or it might be about, you know, what sort of files um, can I save on Glow? Um, there's all sorts of um, guidance and advice on there. And there's also under the help section, um, help sheets and links to professional development for all of the productivity suites that are available on GLOW. Oops, easy. And I clicked on that, didn't mean to do that just yet. So depending on the local authority you're based in, the productivity suites that you have access to will differ. So these are cloud-based industry standard productivity suites and they offer a wide range of web services and resources for education in a safe online environment. Some local authorities 
um, might use G Suite, they might use G Suite for education and all local authorities have access to Office 365. But it just really depends um, on what where you are, what you might be using. And then other local authorities might have a completely separate tenancy to Microsoft Office or G Suite that sits outside Go as well. So today we're going to explore the Glow Launchpad and the purpose of this webinar is to look at how the tools we have access to can aid collaboration and communication between practitioners. So access to Glow is restricted to learners and educators. However, there is a wide number of resources um, that you can use to keep parents informed about children's learning. So all of these um, icons here that we're going to explore today, we've got Microsoft Teams, we're going to explore Microsoft Staff Notebook from OneNote and also Microsoft Sway. These could all be webinars on their own um, and we also have, they're all hyperlinked as well. So we also have learning paths. If you want to dig a wee bit deeper and you want to know a wee bit more about them than the introduction that we're going to cover today, you can click on these icons and it will take you on to our DigiLearn Scott blog where there are short, small, bite-sized videos looking at all the areas um, within each of these apps. So the first um, app that we're going to look at is Microsoft Teams. And if we were meeting in the GLOW environment today, we would likely have been meeting in our national digital team. So what is Microsoft Teams? It's a digital one-stop shop for conversations, online meetings, you can collaborate on documents, share content, organise content. It's accessible. You can access it on any of the devices that you're using as long as you have internet connection and you have logged into Glow. And you can search for files, you can search for conversations, um, all simply by using the search box at the top. And it's an evergreen product, which means it's continually updating. There's new features being added all the time. And what might you do within the Teams environment? You can have conversations, ask questions, share information and really build relationships and communities. Um, that's what we find very, very useful um, within the digital skills team and also for practitioners. Because as you know, we're not able to, to go to other schools and meet up and have the same flexibility that we did before. It's also really useful as well for think of your staff who are perhaps working different shifts. So if you are ELC based, you might have staff working different shifts or you might have staff um, that are part time and the staff meeting may take place on a day um, that's not one of their working days. So, you know, instead of coming in um, or missing out, you can still um, take part in the conversation and catch up. Um, through Microsoft Teams, whether it's tapping into files or whether it's joining an online meeting. And you might have noticed um, if you have logged in to Glow, if you do have access and you've had a wee look in Teams, you might already be a member of a team. You might have already been added to a team, perhaps um, for some um, cluster work um, or some development work that's going on in your local authority. So it certainly helped our team keep on top of tasks and work collaboratively. And we have been doing this for a few years now because we are dotted about all over the country. And it's allowed us um, to have instant access to key documents from any device at any given time. And it really just allows us to work so much more effectively as a team. And because everything that we're working on is cloud-based, so it's all stored on the cloud. Um, it means that we always have the most current, the most up-to-date version of a document, and there's no, you know, having to file, save as, renaming it as version one, two, three, and four, and getting all confused that way. Um, it's also particularly powerful um, for staff who might be shielding currently as well. They are still then able to keep in the loop with everything that's going on. And today's a really good example of where online meetings can work well. So I'm sharing my screen with you and just shortly I'm going to come out of these slides and I'm going to share my browser tabs with you as well to do a bit of demo. And the great thing about having all this access as well is we have up to one terabyte of file storage as well, which really is a lot. Um, and as I said, 
accessible on any device. We can upload and create new files. We can collaborate on existing files. So we can pull existing files that we might have on USBs, devices, or school servers. We can pull them into this environment as well and continue working on them. Then we're going to move on and look at staff notebook from OneNote, which is, if you think of it as the bookshelf that perhaps sits outside the head teacher's office that has loads and loads of ring binders in it. And within each ring binder, there's various sections. Um, each member of staff might have ownership for particular areas, um, get together every now and again to update them and work on them. But sometimes somebody might have you know, the paper copy of something you're working on. This just makes everything so much easier. It pulls it all together. So we like to think of it as a great big online ring binder or a big online bookshelf. We're going to have a little delve into that soon. And then we're just going to finish up by looking at Microsoft Sway, which is a vis visual presentation and storytelling tool. Um, and it can really help you to create learning stories, which can enhance the, the paper stories that you already have, whether it may be floor books or learning walls. The Sway is where you can house all your interactive content, such as videos and voice recordings that really add value um, to the paper copies. And it can also be used to create parent and care newsletters, so newsletters that are engaging, really accessible, and with one click, um, they can be accessed. Okay, and just again, just to um, remind us that all of these can be accessed anywhere via our Glow login on any device. Okay, so first of all, we are going to go to the Glow Launchpad and we are going to find out how we access Microsoft Teams and how we can download um, the apps to use at home on any device as well. And then we're going to dip in a wee bit more to Teams, Staff Notebook and Sway. And then we'll come back at the end for a recap and some slides about professional learning um, and where else there is support. Okay. And again, at any point, please do use the box to pop your questions in if anything's been unclear or if anything, you know, you have a question about anything, if, if maybe it's been a little bit too quick, please do pop that into the box. Okay, so once I have logged into Glow, so I do a little search online for, let's just do it all together just now, for RM Unify, Glow, then pulls up the very first result is the Glow sign-in page. So Glow sign-in, RM Unify. Okay, now I've already been signed in on this tab, so it's taking me right to it, but it will ask you to put in your Glow username and a password. And again, if you're not sure um, who that is in your local authority that can help you to access that, you would visit Glow Connect and we would look for the Glow Contacts. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you come into the Glow Launchpad. Um, we have various different launchpads, but the first one here is the personal launchpad. And everybody's looks different because you can personalise the personal launchpad. You might have no tiles on it as yet. You might have a couple of tiles on it, but I'm sure it will look much different um, to my launch pad and then in the middle you will have a local authority launch pad now i don't have that because i'm no longer local authority based but what we will have in common is the bottom launch pad here which is the national one so there's a little flag and if you click on that you can see all these tiles and what these tiles are are shortcuts to websites that will be useful for professional learning and for learning and teaching now, some of them are within the Glow environment and some of them take you out onto the web out with the Glow environment. But what we want to do just now is we want to know how we can access um, these Microsoft products that we have spoken about. So we have the option to add separate tiles, um, such as this one here, or we can add a one-stop shop that takes us to all of the Office 365 tiles. So we're going to look for this Office 365 home tile. We want to add that because that is the shortcut um, to everything that we're going to cover today. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the blank tile that says Add. And I'm going to choose an app from Library. 
And then in the search box, I'm going to choose Office 365. And there you can see it pulls up all of the options of everything in relation to Microsoft Office. Now, this is the one I'm after. So I would then click Add to my Launchpad. I already have it on, um, so it's only asking me if I want to remove it. But if you do not have it yet, you would click Add to Launchpad. And then if you go back to your Launchpad. It would then become the last tile on your launch pad. Now, if this is something that you know you're going to use a lot and you've ended up with lots of shortcuts, lots of tiles there, what you can do is click on the edit launch pad option, find the tile that you're looking for, and you can either drag and drop or you can renumber it. So I've just renumbered this to number one, save my changes, and now I have this here. And this gives me access to all the online apps that are within the Microsoft Office 365 productivity suite in here. Okay, and one more tile that I would like to show you that's very handy and worth adding to your launch pad is this one here, the Download Office Now tile. Okay, and what this does is it allows you then to install all the downloadable app versions onto your devices at home. Um, and I always forget the number, the amount, Susan, I want to say 13, but I'm not sure if that's the, the, um, the correct number, I always forget, but you can certainly download it more than once. So if you've got a laptop, if you've got a tablet, if you've got a smartphone, you can have all these apps downloaded for free um, on your devices. And that just means if you're ever working um, offline and you want to do you know, you've got a minute or two to, to work on a document, you can still use it offline. And then as soon as you have internet connection, then uploads it um, onto the cloud. So that one's really worth having and it'll save you a lot of money as well. Okay, so now I've got my shortcut. I would like to now go in and have a wee closer look at Teams. Okay, so I can either tap on the little home button here or I can tap on the waffle. So there's nine little dots here at the top left hand corner. And by tapping on that, it's going to pull up all the Microsoft Office apps I have access to. So first up, we're going to have a look at Teams. Now, because I've been using Teams for quite a wee while, um, I'm a member of or an owner of quite a few teams. But if this is the first time you've used it, you might not see any. Um, or you might see a couple that you've maybe been added to already that you didn't know anything about. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to create a new team. Um, and let's pretend that Susan and I um, are working together. We're both early years practitioners currently in a big early years centre. And we are going to set up a team to just improve communication and collaboration between all of our colleagues. So I would like to join or create a team. And then please don't worry if these steps are, you know, they're a wee bit too fast for you. We do have the bite-sized videos that will take you through each of these steps um, in order um, and go into more detail. So we're going to go to create a team. Now there's different types of teams. Probably the most common one will be class teams um, because teams is being used um, for learning and teaching up and down the country or globally even, um, from primary to secondary. But we're interested in these two teams here. We can have a professional learning community, which is an educator working group, or we can have a staff admin and development team. They're both fairly similar, but they come with different permissions. And I've got that open just here to show you the difference. Okay. So with the PLC team, there are different permissions. Everybody here has equal permissions, but with a staff team, the leaders or the owners of the team um, have a slightly higher level um, of, of ownership. And, you know, there's certain areas that then can't be edited by everyone. So you really just have to have a wee look, go through the features and the permissions and see, you know, what is it that you're trying to achieve within your team? So in this team or this pretend team that Susan and I are in, it's going to be a staff team. Um, and we are going to be the, we are the senior members of staff and we're going to set up this team. And then once we have it ready, we're then going to add all our other colleagues onto it who'll have just slightly less um, permission than us to edit files. 
and that'll just that'll just help it run smoothly okay so let's create a team let's create a staff team and let's call it me and this nursery you know, if I wanted, I could put in a bit of a description there um, so that when we did invite other members to the team, they would know exactly what the purpose of the team is going to be about. And I want it to be a private team, so I don't want people to be able to search for this, um, you know, here on the, the, the team's landing page. I just want it to be for our staff team only. Okay, and now it's asking me to add people. Always a really good point to add a co-owner at the same time because if anything happens to you um, or you somehow get locked out of GLOW um, or for whatever reason, you know, your connection or ratchets through your um, wires or something and you can't get back on, um, somebody then will still be able to keep that team going and add other people on. So I'm going to add Susan. And I've missed out an S there, haven't I, Susan? There we go. And there's Susan. Okay, and now at this point, it's bringing Susan in as a member, but I would like to add her as an owner, um, just in case anything happens. Okay, so it's created my team. And there's a couple of places that we're going to have a wee look at in our team. First up, we're going to have a look here at the post section. So this is our conversation thread, and I'm just going to pop a little message in saying, hello, Susan. Now, bear in mind, we would probably have already spoke about this. Um, hello, Susan. Welcome to the team. And then Susan will have a notification that I have mentioned her and she can then reply to me um, in the conversations part. There you go. Instant, just like that. Now, there's a few other places we're going to have a look at. We're going to come back to files very soon. Um, but just to have a wee look over at the left hand side here, we have something called a channel. And we're in the general channel at the moment. So if you think of channels like sections or layers to your team. So let's say we add another channel. And I'm going to have a channel just specifically for staff meetings. Okay, so I've got my general channel here, kind of like our welcome page. And then I've got my staff meetings channel. So any discussion about staff meetings or any files, agendas, meeting notes in relation to the staff meetings will be saved in the staff meetings file section. So it just really helps you um, to keep organised. And I'm just going to add another few, tile, another few channels here to things that we may all be working on currently. Um, in our pretend nursery. And of course, because it's Susan and I, there is always going to be a focus on our digital journey within this nursery as well, something that's ongoing. Okay, so I've got some channels there that's going to help us keep our documents and our conversations organised. Um, but let's say at this point, I was ready now to bring some other people into our team. There's a few different ways you can do this. So um, up here at three little dots, three little ellipses, it says more options. Anywhere you see that um, within the Microsoft um, apps always means that there's um, extra options there behind them. So always worth clicking on and having a wee look. I would like now to add some people to my team. Okay, so I could either do this by copying and pasting a link to the team and emailing it to people. They would then click on that link and I would get a notification, Susan and I, because we're the owners, we would get a notification that some people um, have received the link and they would like to join and then we need to accept. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way that you can do it is by directly adding members. Now, you would need to know their Glow username to do this, but you can directly add people to your team. So I'm going to add um, another colleague, Louise, to our team. And she's going to be a member. And the other way that you can do this is by going into the settings. So you need to go to manage team where the cog is. And then along here to settings. 
and you can generate a team code. So this is a really quick way that you can bring people to your team. And I'll show you where they need to put the code in, but please do bear in mind, anyone within GLOW that has access to this code can then join your team, whether that be learners um, or other um, practitioners out with your centre, local authority, you know, wherever everybody can access your team. So just bear that in mind if you are using the code for quickness, that anybody could then join your team. If that happened to happen at any point, you can remove people and you can simply reset the code so that that code's no longer valid, okay? Now, just back along here in the settings to where I have members. If at any point, any of the members of my team, um, I wanted to make them an owner to take over for, from Susan and I, for whichever reason, I can do that there. So you've got the option there to change roles. Okay, so if you do have a code um, and you're wondering where do you put it, if we just go back to all teams and then back to the join or create team here, you would pop the code in here and that would take you directly to the team. It would make you an instant member. And then when you go back to your team's um, launch pad, you would then see that team right there and then. So that gives you instant access. Um, oh, and a wee tip. So if you don't happen to know people's Glow usernames, because um, each local authority have um, can have different usernames, some begin with a GW for Glow, some might begin when I was based in West Lothian, mine's began with a WL, so they're all different. So this is a really handy tile to add to your Glow Launchpad. It's called the RM People Directory. And if you're looking for somebody, let's say I was looking for my colleague Kishti. I know what her corporate email address is, but I don't know what her Glow email address is. I can pop her name in, I can tap Go, and then it's going to give me her Glow um, account there. It's going to give me her username there. So that's a really handy tile, and that one's called RM People Directory. Okay, so let's get back into our team be at the bottom. So in Eva and Susan's nursery, um, we are going to, we've had our staff meeting um, and now we're going to type up a table of our actions. So let's make sure I'm in the staff meetings area the channel. And then I'm going to go up here to files and I'm going to upload a new document. Now, first of all, to keep things all neat and organized, I'm going to create a folder called actions. And then within that folder, I'm going to upload a new Word document, Actions November 20. And if I had an existing document, I also have the option to pull that in as well, and then it'll make it a live document. So very, very quickly, um, I'm just going to put in a quick table here. Um, what are we popping on it? We're going to have actions and then we're going to have progress and initials. Oops. There we go. Typo there. Oh my goodness. Okay, come back and fix my typos later. So the first action that we were going to pop in here was about our eco greenhouse maintenance. And I think Susan was going to be working on that one. Um, Susan's popping in her um, learning refresh wall. Please do ex excuse my typos. I always get spell fright um, when I'm sharing my screen and this always happens. So just ignore the typos <laughs> uh, at the moment. And as you can see, Susan's got instant access to this document. I can see there that she's got the document open as well. She's in working on it and I can see where her cursor is as well. So this could be done, you know, whether you're all sitting together um, in the staff room, whether you're working summer, working from home or, you know, you might have um, a peripatetic teacher or, you know, you might have an ELC area manager that's based in another nursery on the day that you're having the meetings. You can all then come together um, and be working online at the same time. And this file is completely updating in real time at the same time. No need for shaving it, giving it different um, names 
um, and so on. So I'm just going to come out of that one as well. And there you can see it's there in my files. Now, there's another way um, that you can um, work on files or bring files into Teams at the same time. I'm just going to go back to staff meetings. I'm going to have a new conversation. Let's see, agenda for December. And I can directly then um, pop in a file here as well at the same time. So I might want to bring in a file that I've got on my device. I might want to look if I've got a file in another team or a file from my OneDrive. But what would happen um, when I upload it there that way is it would save it in files but it would just save it here. It wouldn't put it in any folder or anything. So if, if you want to keep your folders a wee bit more neat and organised, it's better to input it into the files section first rather than into the conversation. But if you did then want to have a whole conversation thread about this, um, these actions and you didn't want them all typed over the Word document, what you can do so over here on the right now, you have the option to start a conversation about this particular document. So please post ideas below. Okay, now it's already attached. I'm just going to post this here and you get then the ability to chat about it here at the right hand side. But if we just close all of this down and go back to our posts. You'll now see, I'll just close that one, get that one out of the way. You'll now see that it has, Susan's got it here as well, can we catch up about this please? Um, and then all the relevant conversation just flows underneath and we know where the latest and um, most up-to-date chat about a particular document is that so keeps it all in the one place, which is just really handy, especially if you're not seeing each other face to face and you know, you're not having that important conversation where you can understand things a wee bit better when you have that face to face conversation. Um, this can certainly help. OK. What's next? Right, we're going to come back to meetings um, and that face-to-face -face conversation just in a wee second. Um, but before we do that, I would just like to show you um, how you can add some tabs along the top here. So tabs are shortcuts um, to websites um, and also various apps that you have built in to Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Planner is one that I've always found really handy and we use it within our team and it just helps us to stay organised um, and keep on top of tasks. Um, so this task is going to be about, what is this one going to be about? Um, we'll just let's call this one 220 to 21. And then I'm just going to save it. And then I'm going to go in and add some tasks. Now, I'm going to add a task here um, called Eco Flag Submission. And I would like to assign this particular task to Susan um, because she's taken a lead role on this. And there is a due date for this one. We need this one completed by the beginning of December. I'm just going to add a task there and then Susan, when she gets some non-contact time, um, she's going to work on this submission and when she's got it complete, she can then check off the task and let us know that she has completed it. Um, and then we're going to have a task here for, um, let me see, um, let's see, digital learning. And that task needs to be done. Well, that's going to be by this week. And Louise is going to action this task. OK, so I can see that Susan has been in here and she has completed that task. So they're shown here in the layout um, of um, a bucket. But if that you know, doesn't work for you, if you would rather sort of look at it in a calendar layout, if that's a wee bit clearer, um, then you can look at it that way as well. And then it will you know, flag up on a particular date when something's due. You've also got the, um, the list option as well, if you'd like to look at it in a list. And then you can do a wee bit um, of analysing as well. You know, if you want to keep on top of how many tasks um, are currently um, in progress and how many, you know, have not been finished yet, you can do so as well. So this kind of um, 
I suppose what it would be like when I was back um, in nursery there was the giant whiteboard in the staff room that had you know all of this data and all of this information on it but of course you could only access that when you were in school um, because you didn't have the digital um, access to it um, so that's just another place for um, organising tasks now. As well as having the planner, um, I did mention you can have shortcuts along the top. So there's a whole variety here of different shortcuts um, that you can look from. But I would like to add a shortcut to a website. Um, and this is one um, that I know that the staff team um, are going to be dipping in and out of very regularly. So I am just going to go to where it is online. I'm going to copy and paste the, the hyperlink to that particular document or site. And then I'm just going to pop it in here. And then I'm going to save it. And it's also going to notify everybody. Um, it's going to pop this in the channel. So I probably um, could have had a channel um, for self-evaluation just to keep things all organised. But for quickness, I'm just going to pop it in here into our staff meetings um, area. So I've now then, I've got a shortcut to that. And then if I just go back to our posts, you can see everybody's going to be notified that I have popped um, a link in there. Okay, so I, I do appreciate that this is very fast, um, but we do, like I said, we do have all this recaps again in the smaller bite-sized videos. Okay, so now just a couple of other things. Um, let's say we're going to have our planning meeting, Susan. Um, but we're all over the place. We're not all based um, in the same centres and we've got some staff um, not able to make it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick video call. So what I can do is I can either schedule a meeting to happen right now, um, meet right now, or I can schedule one to happen at a later date. So if we wanted to meet right now, we would click on the meet now button. You can give your title a subject, meet now, and then it starts a video call right within the channel. But not everybody knew about that, so it would be better um, housekeeping and just um, nicer to schedule the meeting. So staff meeting, November, um, or planning meeting, I can't remember, it's a planning meeting, wasn't it? Planning meeting, November. Now I can invite people that I want to come to this, um, that I specifically want to come. I can include people as optional so they have the choice or I can just simply post it like this um, in the team. Um, let's see, it's going to happen Monday the 2nd at 11 o'clock. I could pop some description in there if I wanted to. I'm just going to hit send. And what it's done is it's popped now on the conversation part of the team. It's popped a notification that there's going to be a meeting happening on this date at this time. And then when I click on it, I've got the option to join. Okay, and then when I'm in there, when I've joined it, I then have the option to share my screen. So very, very quickly um, demo that and I'll just make sure my sound is muted or you'll get awful feedback for um, a video call that's inside a video call. But normally I would have my sound on. I would then join the meeting. Um, I would then see who else um, has joined the meeting. If I needed to prompt somebody, I could invite them then to join the meeting. Um, we also have, we've got the, the chat um, facility within a meeting as well, like we have just now in Google Meet. And then the, the best part is to be able to share your screen. Okay, so you've got different options here for the things that you have open. You might want to go through a presentation or you might want to share something from your browser. So you might want to share your desktop window. And that way people can see exactly what you're talking about in real time. You can have that face-to-face -face, um, dialogue and you can have the, the written dialogue there as well. Okay, just come out of that. You also have, there's a private chat within Teams as well. Um, and it's not just for people that's in your team. You can chat to anybody that's in Glow. And through the private chat, you can also start a video call um, at the same time as well on an audio call. You have the option if you want your video um, on. So you can do that within there um, and also within calls as well. Um, just before we move on to um, OneNote staff notebook, just a wee tip here. Um, when you are using Teams um, and you're online, bear in mind what your status is because if you are you know you might have the app and um, it might say that you're available but you're actually working with children you're working with learners you might want to just change your status there um, and either appear offline you know or you know 
whatever just so that you know a colleague doesn't maybe start randomly calling you um, during a time when you are busy um, and another wee tip there into settings and then into notifications um, I did mention a couple of times that you have access to these on any devices um, I do have teams downloaded on my personal device but I have all my notifications turned off because you know, just for the work-life balance, I don't want um, work notifications coming through on my personal device. But sometimes it's much quicker for me if I'm looking for a particular file or a particular document just to whip it up um, on my phone rather than you know going to my device, booting it up, logging in. Um, I can just I can do it that way. So it's really personal preference, um, but that would be one that that I would be checking to make sure that um, I was happy with. Okay, so. Back to our Glow Launchpad, back to Office Home. Oh no, we forgot about Staff Notebook, I do apologise, that's in here as well, sorry about that. Okay, so Staff Notebook, just another place to add even, you know, another layer of um, organisation um, to your staff team. So it gives you these um, sort of generic um, sections that come um, you know, with as part of Teams, you can take any of these away. You can edit any of these um, to suit yourself at any time, whether it's at startup or whether it's later on. So I'm just going to keep with um, for quickness for the options that it's given me there. This might take a wee minute. I did mean to do that when I first set up the um, staff team staff notebook. So I'll maybe, Susan, I'll maybe just leave this a wee minute or two. Oh no, here it comes. I'm going to dip into Sway. I'll come back. So within your staff notebook, which is like your big um, bookshelf with all your ring binders on it, there are different sections. Okay, there's a welcome section and then there is a collaboration space. And that's where multiple um, staff members can all share content, organise it and collaborate in there all at the same time. Okay, and this is some of the um, examples that it has given us um, from what we saw at the startup screen there. Within the content library here, that's a read-only place. So that's where your team owners can update and upload policies and documents that you know they just want you to read, um, but they don't want you to edit. And then of course, everybody that's joined the team they have their own space as well so this might be where you want to um you know keep records for you know your professional development areas um that you're working on um of the curriculum it really all depends um just bear in mind um check out the glow community rules about um saving information and always check with your local authority digital lead as well um about protocol for saving information you know so if we're thinking you know sensitive child protection information this probably isn't the place for saving it it would be you know in line with local authority policy and where it already is saved before so just bear that in mind okay so i'm just going to close these ones down Within the collaboration space here, um, I would like um, to add another page. So I'm going to add um, in here, I'm going to have a whole section here um, on schematic play. Oh no, I'm going to have a section on schematic play, not a page. So think of this as the ring binder. Okay, and then within schematic play, I want to have um, my different sections. So I'm going to have, oops, Daisy, I'm going to have, um, there you go, transporting. Maybe one section. And then I'm going to have trajectory. Oops, not yet available. So it's just loading up. So I'll just stay with this transporting page at the moment. So as part of our um, self-evaluation at the moment in our nursery, um, we are going to be exploring schematic play and we want to look at where we can see it and make sure um, that we are understanding of it, we are recognising it. Um, so Susan, she is going to look at the um, transporting elements of schematic play and she's going to keep her eye out for where she's seen this um, in nursery and or in P1 but we're in nursery um, and she's going to upload some photographic observations and then we can have the all-important dialogue underneath it. Um, so using a cart, um, but might 
me a bag or a box, you know, and so on. We could put um, our definitions and our understandings um, in there. Um, and then that's all updating again um, in real time. So it might be just to start off, you might just want to use the files section um, of Teams. That might be enough for you at the moment because you can still collaborate um, in real time. But Staff Notebook just adds another layer of organisation. And if you're going to, you know, if you're going to end up with lots of documents um, and lots of different things that you're all working on, it's just going to give you a bit more um, organisation, so a bit more control of the organisation of that. Okay, so that's staff notebook that comes um, as standard when you create a team. Okay, how are we doing for questions? Are we okay? Right, so now we're going to go back to um, our Office 365 home and we're going to go to the app called Oops, the wrong one. The app called Microsoft Sway. Now, Sway is only available online. Um, that's not part of the um, products that you can download um, as an app. It's an online only um, one. It used to be an app a few years ago, but that has since um, been um, removed and it's now just online only. So this is the storytelling and presentation software. It's a little bit different from PowerPoint, as you will see. Um, it has sort of more of a flow to it um, and it's much more accessible for young learners in terms of them being able to just swipe through. Now you can have various layouts, you can have it vertically or you can have it horizontally and I quite like the horizontal left to right layout because that is the way that we encourage turning the pages of a book. So in this demo um, example here, there is a floor book or maybe a learning wall in the nursery that children have been contributing their knowledge and understanding about harvesting. They've got the drawings in, they might have some photographs in, they've got mark making in and there might be some um, written examples from the staff of adult and child voice. But we've got lots of rich media as well. We've got some video footage and we've got some voice recordings. So now we need to put them somewhere that's accessible um, and somewhere that staff, um, learners and parents and carers can access as well. And it's something that really adds value um, to the children's existing pieces of work. So here you can see we've got videos, we've got photos. And what I particularly like having is these voice recording options as well. Um, so in this example, there's quite a few um, families who have Polish as a second language, um, English as a second language, they are Polish. So we have some definitions in that language. That's parents um, have supported us with and pop their voice recordings in. Lots more photographs, video clips, which of course is great for you know learners that maybe weren't able to be part of the activity. They might have been off, might have been shielding um, for whatever reason. Um, and it's just a really great way to revisit learning um, and then allow those next steps, those plods um, to be um, created um, because it's given children a real opportunity to consolidate their learning you know things that you know what it's like um, yourself if you're doing an observation you, you can miss things and it's not until when you go back um, and you re-watch it that you realize there was much more happening and it can be the same for children as well when they go back um, and re-watch the clips they can pick up you know other things that they might not have noticed uh, because of everything else that they were involved in at the same time Okay, so that's what um, a sway looks like in the context of a learning story. But what I would like to do now is just show you the, the edit mode. Okay, so we were in play mode there, but now we've gone back into the storyline mode. So instead of having PowerPoint slides, you have something called cards and you have various types of cards. Um, so you have um, heading cards, title cards, text cards, and then also you have the options just go down to the end here to add on to this, to add in then, um, I'll take that one away and pop a new one in, to add on some more. So I'm just going to pop some text in here. Um, let's see, Jenny um, is talking about, oh my goodness, my typos are all over the place today, about the um, leaves falling off the trees and she has brought 
in a photo to share with her friends. Okay, so then Susan actually has access to this photo. Um, she's either taken a picture of it or perhaps um, mum and dad or, you know, family have emailed the photograph in to keep this learning story going. Um, and then I have made Susan um, a collaborator on this sway, and I'll just show you how you can do that. Just to double check, I've shared it with her. I can invite people to view this way. So if I was sharing it out with um, practitioners, with parents and carers, it would be a view only. But if I want people to edit this way, I can then, you know, pop their um, goal username in here. SLF. Let me add my colleague Louise in. Um, and that will give her access to the sway. And Susan is an author on the sway as well. So um, if she had access to this photo, she could then add it in um, to her sway as well. And then when I refresh it, let's see. Sorry, I'm a little bit slow at my That's side, okay. Eva. Yes, I no worries. But what would happen is once Susan's got that in, it would then just it would upload in real time. So you don't have to keep sharing different links um, anytime you upload these. And these learning stories, these sways can continue the whole year. It might be something that the children then go back um, and revisit. Um, you know, at a time later on when it's a completely different season or a completely different topic, you know, they might they might want to go back and look at a particular video and then that can spark that interest and that piece of learning all over again and then it can redevelop and reshape. So that's one way um, of looking at Sway. Now I'm just going to go back um, to another way. I'm just going to have a wee look here for my newsletter example. Go to all my Sways. Here we go, see more. I think I need to have a wee bit of tidying up in here, a wee bit of housekeeping. Okay, so just a little example sway here of a newsletter. So instead of, you know, a PDF going on the blog or a Word document um, or a paper copy going home, you can create a sway newsletter for parents and carers or you can upload from an existing document and you can see there it's just a wee bit more visually pleasing and um, a wee bit more eye-catching a wee bit more accessible um, and all they need is the one link to it um, and then they have access to it and it, it might be that the links you know they're put on you might have a blog that you use or it might be you know whatever your system is for getting messages out there whether it's you know group call or whatever you can pop the link on there and then it just really saves all that all oh, the newsletter got lost or it came out the bag you know and it got blown away um, and just very quickly how to start a new sway and again we've got a whole learning path on this we'll take you through all the steps Create new, you can give your sway a title and then you can start adding cards. Um, you have as well um, in the design part, um, you have the option then to choose your different styles. So we had all those different colours there earlier on. Um, I'll actually just go back and I'll, I'll just quickly show you um, what that looks like in an existing one. Um, so if I go to design and then I go here to styles, this is where I can choose my layout and this is also where I can choose um, the themes and I can customise it um, to whatever sort of suits my preference. And they really are, they're endless. There's so many themes here. And if there's a particular theme that I like uh, and I want it tweaked slightly, I can just keep hitting this remix button here until I'm quite satisfied with um, how it looks. So it really saves you a lot of time. All you need to focus on is the content um, and the tools here um, make it look good for you. Okay, so the other option, let's say that you have within your team, you are all working on, there's a Word document and you're all gathering information um, for a staff newsletter. But it's just on a Word document um, where you've got all your content, but you would now like to use that Word document. You would like to pull it in um, to a sway. So I'm just going to go here. Should have a folder. Let me see what I'm a demo ELC files. And I should have a newsletters folder. Okay, so here's just the basic standard Word document. I'm going to pull that into the sway. OK, 
Okay, let's have a quick look. Okay, so it looks pretty standard just now, but it's given me um, some coloured headings to make things stand out. It's arranged um, my photographs. That's not really quite how I would like it. So I'm going to hit edit, I'm going to hit design, styles, and then let's go. I'm going to go for this. Do I like the look of this? Yeah, I do. It's going up and down, but yeah, I would rather I would rather change it um, so that it's either in little chunks like this, or so that it's flowing horizontally, left to right. I quite like that. But well, hold on, let's see what else does it have to offer. I'm going to hit the remix button a couple of times. Okay, so you get the idea. Now. There are a few more things that you can do um, with Sway as well. You can create a personal template. So it might be your um, school or nursery badge that you might want to have on there as well. Um, and you can check out our learning paths for more on that. But what I do really um, particularly like, what is something that's quite interesting to me, is um, the analytics um, option here. So let's say, for example, I'm using a sway here to advertise all the webinars for ELC staff. Looking at the analytics, I can see how many views um, I have. So this is quite interesting for newsletters as well. It gives you a sort of idea of how many parents and carers are engaging with your newsletter. Okay, so in this short space of time, we have looked at the um, three apps that we have on our screen here for how they can enhance communication and collaboration um, amongst colleagues and laterally with um, parents and carers there as well through our SHWE. Now, where can we access these learning paths? We have a blog called DigiLearn Scott, and this QR code will take you right there. We also have the hyperlinks um, in the um, slides as well. And you want to click on this option here that says learning paths, and that will give you um, all the, the um, content that we've looked at today, but broken down um, into small bite-sized chunks for you to revisit um, at your own time. We spoke about Glow Connect, um, which is a website where you can access um, help and support for anything in relation to Glow. And also remember on your Glow Launchpad, the national option here in the Scotland Launchpad, you have shortcuts to all these places as well. This one here to bear in mind too, um, you can report a Glow concern. So there is um, a Glow privacy um, policy and there's Glow, Glow Community Golden Rules. If there's something that you're seeing on Glow that you think, I don't like that, that's not appropriate, whether it be, you know, something you have saw coming from learners or whether it be something, you know, staff inappropriate use, um, you can report that concern to Glow and then the Glow team can action it. Um, so keep that in mind. But of course, if it is of a child protection nature, it's your local authority child protection policy. Um, follow that always, whether it be contacting your designated member of staff, um, completing a wellbeing concern form, whatever, that always must come first. Okay. Um, also out there on the web, there is a place called the Microsoft Educator Community that you can tap into, again, to access bite-sized courses. Um, the difference is the ones that our digital skills team are offering are in relation to what we have access to within the GLOW environment. Um, so there's a couple here that we've just flagged up um, that you might find particularly helpful. And the links are there that will take you straight to them. Um, and just a wee reminder, this is a top tip. Um, once you've signed into Glow, sometimes um, when you then want to click on something um, within Microsoft 365, this box might appear. And it's just, again, it's your Glow credentials again. So it's your Glow username um, and then your Glow ending. So it might be at glow.sch um, if you're based in a school. Um, it's just simply that that goes in there again as well. And just a couple of other places. So as well as our blog, we also have a YouTube um, channel as well. And that's where all our recorded webinars are housed. So you can click on that um, in the blog, click on webinars, and then it'll be upcoming webinars and webinar catch up. 
where you can access everything that has been recorded. And we also have our team Twitter account as well. Even if you're not a social media user, um, have a wee look now and again. It's an open account. You don't need a Twitter account to um, look at it. And you'll, share, you'll be able to share, you'll be able to see the sort of latest news, all things digital from up and down the country, whether it be you know things we've retweeted, that example of practice that are happening in schools, or maybe news about upcoming webinars that have been released as well. So we try and make sure that they've communicated um, as much as possible. Um, and I'll also send you the link um, just at the end to where all the Education Scotland national webinars um, are advertised as well. Um, and if digital is something that you know you're looking to improve um, either within your setting or you know as part of your professional development, do have a wee look at Digital Schools Awards Scotland. You know, even if you're not at the stage of applying for an award, you can create an account and you can access all the validation material. So it gives you some idea, you know, and some pointers of what things you could be doing um, and what things um, you could be trying to introduce um, to improve digital in your school. Um, and what's particularly useful about the um, website is you have a heat map where you can search and locate schools and nurseries that already have the award. And if they come up um, with a red pin drop, that means they are mentor schools and mentor nurseries, and they are there to support other schools on their journeys. So you can get in touch with them um, when you click on them, their, either their email or their school blog, nursery blog will come up and you can then contact them to ask them some questions. You know, it might be, can you, can you give us some examples? You know, some really practical examples of you know what you're doing say for um, computer science learning um, in your nursery or can you please um, send on your validation report can we have a wee look at that they can help you um, with all of that